Okay, now we're on route to go to the number two must-see destination of Dandenongs. We're going from Sassafras, which is a very short drive to Sherbrooke Forest. It sounds absolutely exquisite, and it is. Okay, guys, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a tip. So here's a bit of a hack. We're about, I've done lots and lots of treks around the Dandenongs. I've pretty much trekked all of the tracks around here and we're going to go to the best place, which is the waterfalls. And the quickest and easiest and safest way to get there is to go into, as you can see, which is Sherbrooke Lodge Road. So enter into the car park at Sherbrooke Lodge Road down here. There is another car park that's about 500 meters uh, west uh, as you're coming down this particular road here. Don't go to that car park. This is closer. It's a lot easier to get to. There's a car that's coming past here now, but this is the way that you want to enter in to get to the waterfall uh, as quickly and safely as you can. And I think the walk here is absolutely phenomenal. So make sure that you enter into the car park at Sherbrooke Lodge Road and you'll make your life a lot, lot easier. Right at the car park at Sherbrooke Forest, just about to head to the uh, waterfall and uh, I've seen a little wallaby here. So we're gonna see a bit of wildlife. So this is a little wallaby. There are a lot of lyrebirds around here as well too. So we may be seeing some lyrebirds as we get uh, a little bit deeper in the forest. Um, possibly the, the odd echidna. Uh, and maybe a wombat, but there are a lot of wallabies and there are a lot of um, lyrebirds around here. And this one looks quite, quite tame. Let's see how close we can get. Not gonna hurt you, little fella. There is a lot of wildlife that you can get and see around these tracks here. And they're quite tame, as you can see, because they're quite used to seeing a lot of humans. Oh, I startled him, and off he goes. Anyway, more to come. Okay, so once you come into Sherbrooke Forest uh, picnic ground, uh, the car park, what you want to do is get, get a park, okay, and then make your way uh, down the track down here it's pretty easy okay so make your way down the down the track here there's a big sign that was behind me that was saying no dogs and also that the waterfall was closed so we're going to go down and see i don't know why it would be closed uh, there's a bridge that sort of goes across the waterfall so i'm not quite sure why why it would be closed but we're going to keep on going anyway but it's pretty easy i'm actually wearing my my flip-flops because it's so hot, it's about 30 degrees. Now there are a few ants around. Um, now as you, as you can see, it's, it's pretty dry here. Um, it's pretty easy to walk, so that's why I'm using my flip-flops. As I said, I have trekked um, and walked along most of the tracks around the Dandenong Ranges, and this is the most beautiful walk, just because it's a very easy walk. Uh, and also there are numerous tracks that go off this uh, as well too. So you can go off and explore around here and not get, not get lost. Uh, it's quite easy. Uh, but the main point is, is the waterfalls. Now with the waterfalls here today, I don't expect if we can get there, because they said that it's closed. Um, if we can get there, there's not going to be a lot of water because it's summer and we haven't had a lot of rain for the past sort of week and a half. So... Don't expect a big rushing waterfall, but in definitely in uh, winter when it's raining uh, a lot more. So there's lots of things sort of happening around, around me here. We're going to look out as well too, uh, see whether we can spot some, some lyrebirds. But if you have a look at some of these trees here, guys, they're just absolutely immense. You know, these trees here, uh, they would have to be 40 or 50 stories high, straight up. Um, it's just just absolutely amazing. It's beautiful around here. It's nice and cool. It'll probably only be maybe about sort of 25 degrees, but yeah, it's absolutely beautiful here. So it's really really nice. It's always great to come here during summer. Hey mate, how you doing? Uh, it's great to come here during summertime. 
uh, in winter it's always a little bit colder the track is very very dry so it's very dry around here and um, that's why we have uh, problems with bushfires you know when this scrub goes up um, there's no way that you can put it out but it is still quite green here there's a lot of this low-lying ferns and bamboo here and it's still quite green I expect it to be a lot brown a lot of this grass generally is brown this time of the year and hopefully we've already seen a, a little wallaby that was a wallaby it wasn't a kangaroo wallabies are a smaller version of a kangaroo we've already seen a wallaby here today but uh, hopefully we're going to be able to see a lyrebird because I've tracked this trek a lot and I've seen a few lyrebirds along here so I'm going to see whether we, we, we can see one and if not if I don't I'm going to see whether we can go and find one. I'm going to walk out to one of these, uh, some of the less walked tracks and see whether we can get to see a beautiful lyrebird. Um, the reason why they're called a lyrebird as well too is because they can mimic many other sounds of other animals. Um, that's why. And also there, there's a beautiful little, little, little bird down there if you can see it flying around there. Beautiful little robin with a... With a uh, a yellow crest, a yellow chest that just ate a worm. Um, they're called a lyre bird because they can ma mimic uh, many other bird sounds. Uh, but also they've got beautiful feathers out the back that look like a harp. Uh, so they sort of come around one way, come around the other way, and they're sort of like nearly sort of peacock feathers in the middle, but fine peacock feathers in the middle. But we're going to see whether we can see a lyre bird. Now, a lyre bird was as well too on one of our coins, and I'm pretty sure it used to be on our, don't quote me, I think it was the five cent piece. I think it still is on the five cent piece. Um, and because I don't use coins that much anymore, have a look at this tree. I've got a special name for this tree. And if anyone wants to put in the comments what they think my special name for this tree would be, you let me know. But uh, yeah, that's my special tree. It's, uh, it's a very, very big hole in that tree. Um, and let's go in there. Let's go all the way in there because this is actually carved out here. As you can see, all the way up there. I'm going to put my little torch on. Now I'm in a hollowed out part of this tree here. As you can see, it doesn't go up that high. Uh, and this has been all hollowed out by termites. So termites have, have eaten, eaten all this away um, here, as you can see. And even if we dig into this, you can sort of see termite holes here. Um, but this has all been eaten away by termites, which is obviously going to not make it as, uh, as, as strong. Um, but yeah, I'm in, I'm in this hole here. We'll get back out. Ooh. Okay, guys, so just a very short stroll from the car park, only probably about 300 metres. You're going to come to a fork in the road. One way is going to give you some, some directions here, which is quite simple, as you can see, uh, to the falls. So we've got to follow that way. This other way is going to go to the Link Track and O'Donnell Track as well, too. Um, I've, I've tracked them. Well, it just goes to basically just to a car park, really, and it's not that interesting. But, uh, yeah, keep on walking along here. It's, it's fairly well signed all the way through, so you can't really go wrong. It's, it's pretty easy to sort of follow. Um, have a look at this very interesting tree here. It's still alive at the top. It's got like these warts on it. Now this is a standard Australian gum tree, um, but as you can see at the top there, it's not looking that healthy. There are only, um, most of the branches are still sprouting leaves, but this, this disease that it's got here will kill this tree I would be saying in the next probably five or ten years. As you can see, the, the gum tree that's next to it, like this way, these ones, you can see how healthy they are and they've got a lot of leaves. And this one here hasn't got a lot of leaves. That's because it's being killed by this particular disease. So when you're walking around here, try to be quiet um, so that you don't um, scare any of the, um, the wildlife that you may encounter. Um, you know, there, there would be, you can also see lizards around here. Um, sometimes it's good to also um, have some repellent because sometimes there are some mosquitoes. I wouldn't recommend, and I have, I've trekked through a lot of the bush here um, looking for live birds and different fauna. I wouldn't recommend that. Reason being, leeches. 
there are a lot of leeches around here. Yes, blood sucking leeches. And they will basically stick into you and they'll suck blood. Okay, now as you can see, this tree behind me has uh, fallen from the other side of the, the bank there. So just down here is, is a little creek, which obviously isn't running because I can't hear it running. But as you can see, you can see how big it is and people have uh, used it as a bridge basically. They've cut uh, the bits and pieces off so that people can get walked through. But you can see how long this, this goes for probably about another at least 50 meters. So it was a massive, massive tree. Um, and these trees will fall quite often. As you can see, the roots had just given up on that tree over the other side. There you can see it's pulled up a lot of roots from the, uh, the creek on the other side. But this is quite common. You'll see a lot of fallen trees around here. Um, and these trees, they do, they, they fall down and uh, they only have a certain lifespan. Okay, so I'm just here at uh, Long Bridge here. Now, as you can see, there's a tree behind me, which isn't even a big tree. I'd be calling that a small tree which has basically fallen down and fallen across the bridge and just completely smashed the bridge. So it's unusable, you can't get through it. They've blocked it off. And another tree in front of it has actually fallen as well too. So as you can see, so there's a lot of uh, trees that have fallen here. And I know that they've got some uh, benches that are around here that are dedicated to people where they've actually, trees have fallen on them. So they're little plaques. Um, and as they've been walking through here, trees have fallen. And I'll see whether I can find one of those particular plaques, but I know that I've read a few of them where these benches have been dedicated to people um, that have been walking around here and uh, trees have fallen and felt fallen on them and they've, di they've died. Now, this is very rare. You've got to have bad luck for that to happen. Hi, guys. Now, um, we're about 200 metres from the fall, so you're going to come again to a fork in the road. Either way, we'll get you there. It'll say, it says falls 200 meters left or right. That will just get you to the, the bottom part. This will get you to the higher part. I generally head to the left, the left track, and then I walk down just because it's a higher road. I like to take the higher road. Now, it has been blocked off. Now, this right here where this big tree is, right behind me, was formerly the walking track. Now, in October, we had some huge storms here. Uh, once in a hundred year storms, it was very, very windy. Oh, guys, I've just got to film this and now I know why they've blocked this area off. I'm standing behind a massive tree. Now the girth of this tree here would have to be eight foot. Uh, I'm six foot, so it's eight foot and it's just been blown over. So the roots basically gave up. Um, and, and you can have a look down the trunk here. It's just huge. It's a long, long tree. It's probably at least 60 or 70 meters. And you can see the yellow clump, which is another bit of land, uh, soil where when this tree had fallen, it's taken another tree out. But that is just a huge tree that's fallen down. It's been uprooted. Um, now I can see why they've been, and you know, they've stopped people from coming here, which has actually been great because um, it, it, there's no, there's no people uh, here, which is great. At the start of the track, there was quite a few people, but this is the, the backside of this tree. Ha have a look at this. This is just amazing. Look how big the backside is, and look at the hole that it's left in the ground. But you can see that such a big tree like that, a gum tree, didn't have such a big root system. All right, guys, we're about to come up to the waterfall here. Now, it's nothing crazy, but I'm not quite sure whether I had it blocked off, but this is where you get down to the waterfall. Um, and these are some of these memorial parks here that I was talking about beforehand um, that are on some of these benches here. I'll read them a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, let's keep on going down here. This is the waterfall. And I wasn't expecting this much uh, water to be, to be here. So it's absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful area. Um, and it's absolutely fantastic. So this isn't the waterfall. The waterfall's down this side. I'm going to flip the camera around. It's going to do a, uh, a pan around here. Have a look at that for you guys. Just, just beautiful. Just amazing. Okay, guys, so here's the waterfall. It looks like it's man-made, doesn't it? But it's not. Nature has made all of this. And this is this lip. And that's the fourth waterfall there. So it is actually running quite fast for summer. So what a broken trees. But have a look at this beautiful view. And you know the great thing? 
There is no one here because they're all a little bit too scared to go over that track. And it's just stunning. And the air is so fresh here. Have a look at these trees. They're just so tall. And that's the way I came. So guys, where I'm heading along, this is where the waterfall was, that's the stairs, which is what I call the higher end. And then there's the, the hill climb track. And this is on the way to Belgrave, where we've just come from. I'm gonna keep on walking along here for a little bit. Um, and we're not gonna go all the way, but I'm gonna see whether we can see some wildlife and see some, uh, hopefully see some live birds. Okay, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed uh, the day with me today. And uh, please leave uh, some comments uh, if, you, if you agree with anything, disagree with anything, if you enjoyed it. Um, click like and subscribe to hear both all of our other videos. And uh, much love. Thank you very much for watching.